Hello and welcome back. This is Candice from CanDoodle and today I'm going to be showing how to make this interactive pull tab slider card without using any specialty dies. So let's get started. So today I'm going to be using a digital stamp and I know some people are a little worried or uncomfortable with digi stamps so I wanted to show just how easy they are to use. So I just have Word open and I went to insert pictures and then I'm going to select the stamp that I want to use from where I have it saved on my computer and just click insert. So then you can see the stamp is there and you can resize it by either pulling on these corners and if you hold down the shift button it'll make the aspect ratio stay the same so it doesn't get distorted or what I prefer to do is come up to the corner here where it has the height and width and I just change that to however many inches I would like it to be. So for this one I chose three inches because it's going to go on a standard A2 card. And what's nice about Digi Stamps is that you can also make your own sentiments. So uh, for this one, I just wrote just sliding by to say Merry Christmas. And I picked a font that I like, but you can use any font that you have on your computer, even download fonts from Google um, to really mix up your sentiments. So it's super, super versatile. And then once I'm happy with how things are looking, I just go to File Print. And my printer is giving me an error message only because it wasn't plugged in. So that's a me problem. And once that's printed out, that's all there is to it. I printed this on some 80 pound cardstock and then I'm just going to move on to do some Copic coloring. So this digi stamp is actually from Three Room Studio, which is a Canadian company owned by Sandy, who is the sweetest woman ever. And I'm so, so excited to be joining their design team. Sandy is so talented and she actually illustrates all of the stamps. Um, and they're really a unique style and so, so cute. Um, so I'm so excited to be part of the design team and I was making this project for one of our Saturday challenges. So I figured I'd film it and show how I did it. Um, and if you're new here, this is my Copic coloring. Um, so I'm just going from lightest to darkest and darkest back out to lightest. And I always list the colors that I'm using on the screen. I am by no means a Copic expert, um, but I do try and consider light sources and things like that. And I, when I was first starting out, had a really hard time picking colors. So that's why I always like to show the process um, just in case others are having the same sort of issues that I have with choosing colors. Um, and so while I'm coloring, I'm also going to tell you a bit about Team Tiny, which is a Facebook group of crafters who are newer to YouTube and still growing our subscriber base. We all have under a thousand followers, which usually means that you get to watch all of our hops and content without any commercials, but YouTube is now changing the way it does things a bit, so that might not be the case um, going forward, but we shall wait and see. Um, but nonetheless, these are all some really, really talented crafters, and we do a hashtag driven hop, so all you have to do is click on the hashtag in my title or description, and it'll take you to all of today's videos. So I really encourage you to check out all of the awesome artists. Um, and so this stamp, like I said, is from Three Room and I will link to it down below. Digi stamps are super, super affordable. So that's also something to consider. It might be a bit of an easier way to get into card making. So once I'm done coloring that, I'm just going to cut down my sentiment strip with my guillotine trimmer and then we're going to do some ink blending on the background. So this is becoming my go-to background for night skies. It is Blueprint Sketch, Chip Sapphire, and Black Soot Distress Oxide Ink. And I like to kind of go in a radial pattern, so to make the edges a little bit darker and then the center a little bit lighter. And I'm just making sure to blend down toward the bottom, but not all the way because my snowbank is going to cover that. So I'm coming in with my Distress Sprayer, just with some water first. And then I am going to come in with Lawn Fawn Liquid Stardust, water that down a little bit and flick that on with my paintbrush to give some glitter to this night sky sort of look. Then I'm coming in with Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White, and this is just a really opaque white paint, um, but any acrylic paint would work. And then I am watering that down and flicking it on as well. And this gives a really cool sort of snowy look to the night sky. So now we are going to move on to the pull tab piece. So for any pull tab, you need a front that has a track cut in it and then your back piece, which is the pull tab that you'll pull on to make the image move. And then you take a piece of foam tape and stick it to the pull tab through that track in the front piece and glue on your stamped image or whatever you'd like to move. And so that's the basis of a pull tab. But as you can see, there's this track here, which I don't always love to show on my cards. So I'm going to show you how to get around that. So here I'm just laying out where I'd like things to go and how I want my snowmobile to move, but I don't want that track showing. So I'm gonna show you a way to make that not happen. 
So I'm just marking out with my pencil where my track should start and stop so I have an idea before I start cutting. And I'm just taking a ruler and my X-Acto knife on my cutting board to cut that track. There are definitely some dies that do this, but I wanted to show that you can make one of these cards without having any specialty products and just using what you have on hand. And I'm having to go over it so many times because this knife definitely needs a new blade. So once my track is cut and I'm happy with that, I'm just gonna make sure everything is still working and where I would like to have things. And now I'm gonna take a sheet of window plastic and I'm just gonna map out how long I need of that um, because I want it to go right behind the stamped image and hang down just a little bit over that track. So now I'm gonna take some strong glue, I'm using glossy accents and I'm only going to put glue on the top and that way there is a small portion toward the bottom of the snowmobile where I'm rubbing my finger where there's no glue. There's just an open space between the acetate and the stamped image. And now I cut my pull tab off camera and I also rounded the corners and stamped pull. And now there's a massive jump forward because I thought I was recording when indeed I was not. So what I'm doing is I am stacking up two layers of paper um, on the back panel of the card around where that pull tab is gonna go. And this is gonna form a bit of a channel so the pull tab has room to move. You could definitely do this with foam tape. In fact, people usually do it with foam tape, but this is going to go through the mail so I'm trying to minimize the bulk where I can. So once I have two layers of paper around all of that, I'm gonna come in with my double-sided tape and put that down everywhere except the channel. And I'm making really sure to have no tape in the way. And then I'm going to put that on my card base and put my little pull tab in. And now I am sticking foam tape where I want it to start and making sure that it all works. And then I am just lining up my snowmobile and making sure it's moving how I'd like it to. I figured out that my little snowbank was a bit too high, so I did cut that down and I'm just making sure it still covers the track nicely. And then I am going to check one more time that things are in the right place. And now I'm just coming in with a pencil and marking where I can trim that acetate because I did leave it a bit longer, so I had some room for error. I peeled off the backing of my foam tape and realized I forgot to pop up the top of this. I generally like to do this just so everything is laying with the same dimension um, because if the bottom is popped up and the top isn't, it might kind of want to lean back against the card. And then I just used some glossy accents on top of my foam tape to make sure that stuck down really, really well. And now I'm coming in just with my snowbank and putting down some foam tape. I'm just kind of doing it in this bit of a finicky way to make sure that nothing is in the way and everything is still moving well because I have made the mistake of putting foam tape where it doesn't belong in past. Um, and so once I have that all taped down and glued down, it is moving and everything is working well. So last up, I am gonna come in with my sentiment strip and just use some double-sided tape to put that down across the top. And there we have the final card. It's so, so cute. And I love that these dogs are just playing on their snowmobile. It's really a true Canadian winter scene. I hope that you enjoyed the card today and this gave you some ideas to stretch your supplies and make a pull tab slider card without using any specialty dies. I'm so appreciative of the time that you spend here with me. Thank you so much for stopping by. And of course, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments. And as always, you can also follow me over on Instagram at Candoodle Creations. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.